friends, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another reading general life vlog. Let's have a seat. This reading vlog is extra special, extra exciting for a variety of reasons because we're gonna be doing not only reading, uh, but my mom's coming into town and I'm gonna be continuing to do some house stuff. I also wanted to mention, I did switch over to my other vlog camera. I've been practicing. And the main takeaway with this vlog camera is I needed a little mic thing on top, which I got. And two, I need to be really concentrating about how much I'm moving my arm to keep it as steady as possible. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm really concentrating on trying to hold this camera as steady as possible. But I'm really looking forward to filming this vlog because first and foremost, my mom is coming into town, which I'm really excited about. She's coming in to belatedly celebrate her 60th birthday. And she also like wanted to see the house and help um, kind of do some fun stuff around the house. She and I are gonna go paint shopping and start testing a lot of paints, which I'm gonna show you guys and show you kind of what Clay and I are thinking. And you know, you guys can weigh in with your opinion. And I think we're gonna do some home and garden stuff, get some like flower pots and things for the outside, which I'm looking forward to. And then obviously just hang out. Of course, um, this is a reading vlog, so I do plan to start a bit of reading and I'm actually about to start a new book as I just finished my last one this morning. And the book I'm going to hopefully be reading the entirety of this vlog is Beasts of a Little Land by Juhei Kim. This is a historical fiction saga that takes place over like 50 years and brings about like a variety of people um, and is set in Korea during their independence movement. It honestly sounds really interesting. I hear it's very emotional and I've heard a lot of really positive things about this book from you guys. I'm sorry about all the sounds surrounding me. It is Matilda's dinner time, so she's very active, but this is going to be the book I'm reading throughout the course of this vlog. Um, and welcome. Uh, I have a few updates to show you guys now, so let's do that. So this front room is basically the same just has like my reading set up. This will be where I film my videos and things for the time being. A neighbor brought over this beautiful plant. But the big thing I tackled today was I made homemade <laughs> spaghetti sauce, homemade meat sauce, um, and did a little bit more organizing and things. And if I bring you in here, you will see, first off, Clay and I got a new lamp. We got one of those arc lamps. And we also ordered a new couch, which is like a deeper couch. Um, and we'll just take up more space in here. So it'll help offset the ginormous lamp. And then if I swing you around, I hung up this new curtain rods day. We got new curtains and we kind of move Matilda's dog bed around wherever the sun is. That's like Clay and I's task to keep Matilda grounded and happy. Where is she? Oh, she's nomin. She's nomin. But anyway, those are some updates. My desk is in here and uh, all the same living room furniture is in here as well. Very cozy in here. Forgot to vlog, but my mother is here. Don't push it anywhere right again. <laughs> well, it's going somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, and I forgot uh, to vlog dinner, but the pasta sauce was a success. I also made garlic bread. Matilda is here and upset that she didn't get any. But tomorrow is exciting because we're gonna go paint shopping. Hi friends. I'm sorry I failed a bit at vlogging this evening, but it was really exciting to see my mom. She is already asleep. It is 9.30, so Clay and I are just hanging out. Probably gonna watch some TV a bit, but I think we're gonna go to bed early because when my mom's in town, it's like, go to bed early, wake up early kind of vibe. Um, but I am gonna start my book, Beasts of a Little Land tonight, which I'm really looking forward to, and uh, watch some good TV. Get all cozy, which we appreciate. Matilda is also here. There she is, there's my girl. She's very sleepy as well. So uh, cheers and good night. I'll have a reading update in the morning. First time I feel like I've gotten fully dressed in over a week. There's Matilda. Just wearing a nice little light spring sweater cardigan. I got these new baggy straight jeans from Madewell. I think I'm a fan. Uh, my mom and I are about to run out and start doing some errands, pick up paint samples, pick up 
a little mini bookshelf from the container store and some other things. Um, so we're about to head out. But before I do, I do wanna do a reading update for Beasts of a Little Land. So I'm happy to report I have read 60 pages of Beasts of a Little Land and I am really enjoying this book. Before I even dive into my initial thoughts and feelings, Hi, Matilda. I do want to quickly give some trigger warnings for colonization, war, violence, sexual assault. This book so far is really engaging, but I can tell immediately it's going to be a pretty heavy read. The book itself opens in the snowy mountains of Korea and basically follows a hunter and a Japanese soldier who cross paths. And from there, they kind of both save each other in an unexpected way. And obviously that combined with the fact that the Japanese are currently colonizing Korea at this particular moment in history. From there, the story kind of shifts a variety of points of view, but the idea is that from this first fateful encounter, fate begins to surround all of these different characters and kind of brings them together through time. From the snowy landscapes of the mountainside, we also follow a young girl named Jade who at the beginning of the book is sold to become a courtesan by her family. And we kind of, so far at least, are just following her through her initial education. And right now she's about to go to Seoul with two other young courtesans that you meet in the beginning of the book. Um, and this whole book also takes place during the Korean independence movement. And I know politics and revolution is going to be pretty central in terms of this book itself. Also just discussion about the Japanese colonization of Korea during this time period and kind of giving a stark look at the reality of that. But so far I've read 60 pages. It's really gripped me. I really like the writing style. The story is very engaging. Again, I can tell it's going to be very emotional. It's already there has been some rather distressing and dark chapters as well. So I did really want to call out those trigger warnings right in the upfront, but I'm looking forward to reading more of this book. I do feel like I'm going to fly through it and I do feel like it's going to be a emotional ride from beginning to end. That is my initial reading update and thoughts and feelings. Matilda's just sitting here staring out the window. So I'm glad she's happy. But anyway, I do need to start running some errands, but just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a check-in and I will chat more with you guys in a bit. Shop one, mom, the container store. <laughs> Buying a new salad bowl and lamenting at all the different couches. Crate and Barrel gets me every time. I also love that table. Matilda is in her spot. Her bed is also in the sun, so just whatever she decides to do, she can be comfortable. What's up? Here's Clay. Mm -hmm. Exciting news. One of the things we picked up today at the store was a book spine from the container store. So I'm actually going to attempt to build this myself and then fill her up with books. More book storage, just what I need, you know? Here is this bookshelf. I think I will do like a rainbow when I have access to all of my books, but for now I think this looks really nice. I'll link it down below. I just got it from the container store and I think it's a really smart way to be able to store books in like a small footprint. So I'm pleased. This room is coming together very cozy. Ignore it. It's kind of messy right now, but so far so good. We did not make it to the paint store today, but we are planning to go first thing tomorrow morning and start sampling paint on the walls and on the kitchen cabinets and stuff. We have it in the calendar. We didn't realize how early the paint store closed, so we just missed out a little bit. But now it's dinner time, we're relaxing, we're hanging out, for sure doing some reading later on, and paint tomorrow. It's dinner time in this household, making a reprise of the spaghetti I made last night. 
with some fresh noodles and spaghetti is done. Good morning, we are looking at paint. Anyway, we got some paint samples, they're in there. We're heading up to uh, paint store number two this morning. Get some more samples, we're making stuff happen. All right, we're back with paint samples galore. You wouldn't be able to tell because a lot of them are just different shades of white, which honestly, until I had to think about paint, I didn't realize how many different colors of white there were and like different types of undertones and stuff, but I did get a few fun colors, namely for the kitchen cabinets. We're leaning towards repainting them like a green color. So I have these two colors and then Sherman Williams wasn't giving like little like actual paint samples, but we have these like pieces of paper and the green we picked from Sherman Williams is this. So I need to figure out how to, I think I'm gonna get some paper for the Benjamin Moore colors so I can like put them side by side and compare them to each other. Here are all the white samples up on the wall. I'm gonna move these out throughout the day. We were able to get like a paint swatch at Benjamin Moore, so I put it on the wall and then also on a piece of white paper. I really have no idea what I'm doing, but I thought maybe there would be a difference. And then it looks so bright, so much brighter on the wall. It also could be because of the sun. I don't know, is that? <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing. And then I have these swatches from Sherman Williams as well. And then I realized for my cabinets, we got two different paint brands, but the colors are literally the same. Like this is Succulent from Sherman Williams and this is Jack Pine and they are basically identical. And then we also got this little cottage. I think this might be a little too cottage core for us, but it is really cute. Um, here's clay. Feature of the century. Oh yeah, I painted it on a piece of paper to see. Taking a break from agonizing over the perfect green shade, which I know these are kind of like blue green. Oh, I don't know. I bet it'll be pretty, but I don't know. Light green could also be nice though. Uh, I don't know. I think I've picked a white, so we've gotten somewhere. Or rather, Clay and I have picked a white. Um, but now I'm actually going to do a bit of reading. I'm just going to get some of this book in. I did pass the 100 page mark of this yesterday and I'm really enjoying it. Um, so I'm gonna just sit down and read some more now, have a cup of coffee, maybe have some candy. You know how it goes. Morning everyone, I need to treat my coffee cup with another baking soda cleaning session, but that's for another morning. Hello, good morning. I have just been enjoying a little reading session with my cup of coffee this morning, and I wanted to do a reading check-in because I would say I'm just at the, or just over the halfway point of this book. I've read 190 pages, I'm in part three, and I am really enjoying this story. Um, first and foremost, I think the time period and just the political setting of the book is just fascinating. It's set during the colonization and then the subsequent Korean independence movement. Um, and so there's a lot of conversations about politics, political activism, and just different groups, both from wealthy landowning classes to street urchins like kind of getting involved in the cause in their own way at the same time though we have a lot of characters that are also involved in the courtesan aspect of korean culture so women who are beautiful and talented and are being trained to be like high and powerful courtesans and also the courtesans involvements within politics themselves and it kind of just shows like these are women kind of cast to the lowest echelons of society because of their profession, but also because of their profession, they kind of have their own power and independence that a typical woman would not be able to have in this time period too. So it's a really interesting dichotomy kind of explored within the courtesan houses, which we've seen in both Seoul and Pyongyang at the beginning of this book. Um, the story itself is also multi POV. So you're shifting to a lot of different people and players. And what's really interesting is like everyone is kind of indirectly connected to each other through time, like various encounters that seem insignificant, like still bring people together or like significant encounters that have been kind of lost through time. Like you still see how these characters kind of orbit around each other. And so far I want to say I have um, gone through about 20 years of time through the first half of this book. And I know there's going to be many more decades to come throughout this story, 
but the book itself is just really pulled me in. I think the plotting is really engaging. I like reading from all the different characters' point of view, good or bad. You're kind of following a lot of different people, both on both sides of the conflict, both sides of the political spectrum, and just both sides of like the economic reality of Seoul during this time. I don't know. I just find the book to be super interesting and I feel like it's going to be very emotional. And at the heart of it too, there seems like there might even possibly be a bit of a love story. Um, but everything also feels tragic at the same time. But yeah, I just think the writing and the story itself has been incredibly engaging so far. So I'm looking forward to keep reading it and hopefully finishing it by tomorrow. At least that's my goal, but I'm halfway through. So we're making good progress. Dressed in like all purple, because I can't help myself, but we're actually on our way to Costco because I guess now that we're homeowners, a Costco membership just goes hand in hand. We're also gonna go look at some fridges because we need to buy a new fridge. And really, I'm just excited because I want a Costco churro because they're the best. Are they still 99 cents, mom? They better still be 99 what? cents. Naturally, I've come to the Costco book table. If you know, you know. Also, I was wrong about the churro price. It's $1.49. More paint swatches. I also posted these on my stories. And the competition between these two colors, fierce, steep. Personally, I'm leaning towards the moody one myself. But we're actually about to head out to my mom's birthday dinner. So I threw on this little airy dress. It's like 86 degrees outside in Texas right now. I'm Right now, I'm enjoying it. So I'm embracing the warm weather. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head out. We're gonna have a bit of a nice seafood evening, seafood tower, the vibe. Hopefully we'll be seated outside. We're looking forward to it. Just finished dinner and now it's my mom's big night out on the town. my mom's dream come true this morning. We came to Lukenbach, Texas, which is about an hour and a half west of Austin. adventurous day exploring West Texas and uh, we're watching some basketball and I'm gonna sit down and read more of my book which I am due to give you guys an update on so I'm gonna read this and then I will give you an update in a bit we've shifted to watching House of Gucci and we're all just very focused on who has the worst Italian accent but so far it's been pretty entertaining. I feel like every movie has become way too long. Like every movie this year is like over two and a half hours long. What's happened? Hi friends and welcome to the end of the vlog the next day. I first and foremost want to apologize. I feel like this vlog, as I've already edited most of it, is a little all over the place, not very coherent, not my best work, and I'm sorry. I think I'm just very out of practice vlogging around other people. With my mom in town, I was like trying to be super present and then I'd forget to vlog. Anyway, all of that to say though, I hope you still enjoyed this vlog and I do have two pieces of good news. One, Clay and I have decided on paint colors, which I will re be revealing at a later date, so no spoilers, but feel free to weigh your opinion in the comments, light green or dark green for the cabinet specifically. And the other piece of good news is I did finish Beasts of a Little Land, which I did not do a lot of reading updates on, but I did get some solid reading over the past couple of days and I really enjoyed this book. Um, in some ways it was different from what I was expecting and then in other ways it delivered exactly what I was hoping. In terms of what I really enjoyed is one, this is a really grand and sweeping tale um, set in Korea. We're following so many significant moments within Korean history and honestly, like it makes me wanna just learn 
so much more. I mean, we're covering things from the initial colonization of Japan to Korea, through the Japanese expansion into the Asian continent, World War II, the Korean independence movement, and then subsequently the Korean War and the divide of Korea between North and South. Also, we even went into the 1960s with one of the first rulers of South Korea and his regime. So there's so much that was covered in this book. And I feel like I almost wish it was longer for that reason. The first half, I would say, was really paced a little more slowly, a little more intimately. This is a book that covers a lot of different points of view because it's really about like fate bringing people together for better or for worse and predominantly one of our main characters is Jade and we follow her from a young child through the majority of her life and see just her basically just trying to survive through so many different harrowing and difficult situations um, but there is still so much life between all the different heartbreaks and terrible tragedy she has to work through. Um, but I feel like the first half was much slower and unfolding these historical moments really felt in step with Jade growing up. But honestly, there's just so much that happened. It did feel like the end while well, pace and I couldn't put the book down um, almost happened too quickly. I almost wish we had a bit more time in some of these time periods to flesh that out but I do really love how intrinsically like the historical setting and the characters were linked and they were treated with the same amount of care and that I really enjoyed. Um, the characters themselves, I found this book to be really interesting because we really jump from so many different points of view um, and I also feel like in the last time I talked to you guys I said oh I hope there's a romance and I would say love is rather central to this book but more so unrequited love and like tragic love and uh, it's so interesting because really so many characters are so imperfect and like what people are wanting from each other perhaps they can't provide or they have really unrealistic expectations about what they should be given. I feel like a lot of the men in this book even the ones you want to root for especially are incredibly imperfect and just like it's interesting because you see all of these people be struck by the tragedy of their surroundings in different ways, but time and time again, like the women characters often have to face the brunt of this in an entirely different way because on top of it all, there's still sexism and misogyny. I found the writing to be really engaging and honestly, there were some really beautiful lines and moments throughout this book and throughout the prose. And ultimately, I was really taken with this book. This was a debut novel and I will for sure be reading more books by this author. Honestly, like my only thing is I wish it was longer and like more things were kind of fleshed out a bit more. Um, and that was really it. It was a really moving story. It's a very harrowing book. There's lots of very dark things that occurs throughout this book too, but there's also a lot to be said about perseverance and people kind of striking where they can to survive. And all of that sentiment being wrapped up in different political movements or economic choices and advancements is all really interesting. But the part that I honestly found the most interesting was the courtesan aspect and seeing kind of behind the scenes of the courtesan culture and kind of how it works in terms of being educated and being prepared for this specific place in society, how in some ways they have so much more freedom than other women during their time period, but in other ways they will always be looked at as lesser um, because of this. It's like this really interesting dichotomy that's often explored and they're also so sought after, but their shelf life is so very short. Um, but anyway, at the end of the day, I did really enjoy this um, and I would recommend it. And those are my thoughts. But I'm sorry again for the disjointed vlog, but I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless. I'll be having more home content and more home vlogs coming up and I promise I'll be better practiced as well. So nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you soon with another vlog soon. Goodbye.